we're moving through the book of Acts, looking at examples of the Holy Spirit's ministry, direction, leadership, in dealing with the ministry of the early church, the apostles. We've seen how Philip was directed by the Holy Spirit to minister to an Ethiopian eunuch. We saw Peter's response to a vision and going with the men to Cornelius' house. The key here, as it says in Romans chapter 8, is that the sons of God, children of God, Christians, those who have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, should be, must be led by the Spirit of God. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and that is just as simple as saying, Lord, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I just invite you into my heart and I confess you as my Lord and Savior. That's all there is to it. It's just a simple free gift. You have this Holy Spirit living within you and he wants to have a relationship with you, which is what Paul said in 2 Corinthians in chapter 13 and verse 14, the communion, the sharing together, the fellowship, the relationship of the, with the Holy Spirit be with you all. There are many examples of his leadership in the book of Acts. And that is why I believe it is important for us to spend time looking at situations that they dealt with and how they dealt with them and how they worked together with the Holy Spirit. I can honestly say, looking back, that it's almost rare these days in a lot of cases for for people to recognize him as a person. So many times we're so focused on the natural and the Bible tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. They're focused on having an experience, having physical emotions to know if he's moving or not moving in a service. You see people when they go forward, well, nothing must have happened because I didn't fall when they prayed for me. Sometimes people fall, sometimes they don't. It doesn't change the fact that he's working in their hearts. I'll take you back to a story of a lady in a church that I was at in Georgia. We ministered there for 16 weeks. She was the church janitor and she would come up to the altar and we were there Sunday night through Friday. I would pray for her and she'd literally take her arms and cross them kind of like this and she'd say, thank you. After a few weeks of this, the pastor and I were talking again. We were looking at the outward reaction. It was like, she's not receiving anything. What's, what's happening to her? Why is she so resistant to what the Spirit of God is doing? What were we doing? We weren't recognizing that it is not a physical reaction. It's a spiritual interaction that's happening, a spiritual transaction. When you pray for people, there is a deposit made within their spirit. Well, this happened for several weeks, just week after week, night after night. We'd see other people laughing. We'd see them dancing. And, oh, we knew that God was working their lives. But one thing I noticed as I was there over a few weeks, I started noticing these people who were having a lot of these physical so-and-so forth reaction. Not all of them, but a large percentage of them coming up for the same situation, the same sicknesses, the same things that they needed to be set free from. They had the so on so forth, physical, outward signs of the Spirit working because we were judging by that, but they weren't having internal change. Well, after a few weeks of this all happened, we got to the end of service and People, I'm walking out of the sanctuary with the pastor and there are people walking in from the outside parking lot and they just would look at me and start laughing and walk by me and the pastor and I were like, what's going on? We heard several people say, well, we just can't believe what she did and we're, okay, what happened? We went out and this lady who had been spending all this time with no outward reaction, anything else, their family had raised this cow that was basically like a pet cow. It was the most valuable thing to her. And she brought it to church as an offering to the Lord and tied it to the bumper of my car, which was why people were laughing. Like I had a very sm small Ford Escort station wagon and I lived in Florida. This is in Georgia. What am I gonna do with this cow? 
but it was her most precious thing and she brought it and we got to talking to her it was absolutely amazing the change that god had worked in her heart but there was no physical what we would judge outwardly and see that's the thing is the spirit of god when he works in your life he works in your spirit there are times when yes people will laugh in the spirit and the spirit is working in their hearts in a service there might be times where people fall but we can't judge what the spirit of god's doing in a person's life we can't judge where a person is at by what we see but we have to be developing this relationship and recognizing him as a person let's look in Acts chapter 16 and verse 6 it says now when they had gone through phrygia in the region of galatia this is talking about paul and his company and notice it says in verse 6 they were forbidden of the holy ghost to preach the word in asia and then in verse 7 it said after they were come to mysia they say to go into bithynia but the spirit suffered them not now think about that who was the one that forbid them from preaching in asia and who was the one that suffered them not from going to bithynia in both cases was the holy spirit who stopped them paul and his group were making ministry plans and they were all set to go into Asia. They had plans to go in, they had plans to go in and preach the gospel, but the Holy Spirit said no. We, the body of Christ, are called to go into all the world and preach the gospel, but we individually aren't called to go necessarily to all the world ourselves. I may be called just to teach and release these videos, but you may not be called to release videos on, on YouTube per se but you may be called into your local town. To know the calling of God on your life, you have to be able to recognize the Spirit of God working in, in your heart. You say, well, I'm not called necessarily to be a minister, but when you look in the book of Acts, Philip and Stephen were both men that Acts talks about signs and wonders following what they did, but they were deacons in the church. You may be in leadership, you may be called to a pulpit ministry, or you may not be, but in any case, you have a ministry. Smith Wigglesworth, in his life, was it said that he was able to personally lead somebody to the Lord every single day. But then you'd read accounts of him walking the streets, listening, waiting. Because he wasn't just ministering to every single person. He was waiting for the Spirit of God to prompt him who to go up to and minister to. And in every single case, when he ministered to people, they were open and ready to receive. We can't take the things of the Spirit and bring them down to the level of works, which is what so many people do. Just because something seems good or is a good opportunity doesn't mean it's something that you or I need to be involved in. How will we know what we should be involved in? How will we know who we should be ministering to? We know by the direction and leading of the Spirit of God. It was the Spirit of God who told them not to go. I've pe heard people, when I talk about this, dis or when I've heard other ministers talk about this, dispute this, claiming that we are supposed to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And yes, we, the body of Christ, are called to go into all the world and preach the gospel. The church as a whole is called to go into all the world. But once again, as I said a few minutes ago, that doesn't mean that you and I necessarily are called to go into all the world. There are a lot of people who may receive from you, but they wouldn't necessarily be able to receive from me. How do we know who, who we're supposed to be ministering to? By the leadership and guidance of the Holy Spirit. But again, that a lot of people miss it because his direction, his leading, his workings are not always spectacular. I've had times where just a thought came up, go to the left and not the right. By going to the left, I was able to stay avoid an accident. I was able to avoid a situation that could have caused trouble. Do I get it right every time? No. You can look back in your life and obviously see play, that there were many places where you, you moved without being directed. We'll make mistakes, but that's the great thing. In Romans chapter 8, it says there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. There's been times where I have got busy and wasn't spending as much time with him as I should. I wasn't spending as much time in the Word. But the thing is, when I came back to prayer, when I came back to the Bible to spend time with it, he was right there. He never once said, where have you been? What have you been doing? He just accepted me, and we just kept moving forward. It was the Spirit of God that told them not to go. The Holy Spirit knows, once again, who will receive us, and he knows who we can help. But we need to learn 
to listen internally, to listen to those promptings, to listen to his voice as he speaks to us in our spirit. But if we're not taking time to develop our spirits by spending time in the word, by spending time in prayer, spending time alone with him, just waiting in his presence, we're not going to be able to recognize those things. A lot of our struggles in life are because we were not praying in the past. And in truth, pretty much everything we deal with on a daily basis is a result of us either praying or not praying those things out in the past. So as we take the time to develop ourselves, we can look at examples of Philip being when the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said to join to the eunuch and the eunuch being saved. Peter, sitting on the rooftop in Acts chapter 10, had the vision and the Spirit of God told him to join himself to those men that he had sent from Cornelius' house. Actually opened the door to the Gentile world and the ministry to the Gentile world. And then again with Paul. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament when he was going into Asia the Spirit forbade him not. If anybody could go into all the world, it should have been Paul. Maybe he went later on. Maybe it was just the timing. But it was the Spirit of God who directed him. The Bible descri describes how the Spirit will lead each one of us individually. And we must learn this if we're going to minister as Jesus and the church ministered. Jesus said, the works that I do, greater works shall you do. But those works only happen in relationship to our being led and guided by the Spirit of God. I want to thank you for watching today. And if these videos are a blessing, if this channel is a blessing to you, I ask you to share with your friends and family. And remember, the communion, the sharing together of the Holy Spirit be with you. God bless. Mm -hmm.